Hello, and welcome to the SharePoint Framework and JavaScript Special Interest Group Biweekly Sync. It is September 10th, 2020. We've got another great meeting for you today, and so let's get right into it. So our agenda for today is, as usual, SharePoint Framework updates, followed by Patterns and Practices program updates, new community samples. We'll do our picture time that we've been doing on our last few calls, which is a lot of fun to get uh, everybody a chance to get some uh, – some uh, screen time uh, for the call. And then we've got three great demos uh, from Yannick, Kisle, and Abhishek. I'm excited to see those demos later. And uh, let's get right into it. Often we get asked for opportunities to participate in SharePoint Patterns and Practices program, whether it's this call specifically or more uh, Patterns and Practices all up. So great ways to get involved. Uh, number one way is to do a demo. I know all of you out there are working on great stuff for your customers and your companies. And uh, where possible and where appropriate, would love to have you demo that work uh, on the call. Uh, so even if it can't be maybe published in the sample gallery, maybe you can do a demo of it. Uh, make sure, of course, you get permission and all those good things. But anything at PNP, anything SPFX, anything client-side development, love to get that. Uh, demo on the call. So if you're interested, just reach out to myself or VESA and we will absolutely get you scheduled on an upcoming call. Uh, it might not be the very next call, but we will get you scheduled. Sometimes we're booked out a month or so, uh, but we will love, love, love all these great community demos. They're fantastic and an awesome way to learn uh, about what everybody's doing out there and learn some new techniques and capabilities and uh, always excited to see the new demos every week. You can also contribute on GitHub. That could take a number of forms, reporting issues. We don't love getting issues, but we love getting them reported so we can get things fixed and improved for everybody. We always welcome across uh, all of the PNP projects uh, pull requests. So you're welcome if you find an issue to perhaps fix it yourself, or perhaps you uh, have an idea for some added functionality you'd love to see in one of our uh, projects. Absolutely welcome that as well. So love to get those pull requests from folks. And then finally, you can always help with existing issues and questions. So if you've got folks that, uh, or you see a question that you might know the answer to, would love to get your help answering that question. Uh, if you have a few minutes and happen to know the answer, sometimes that'll get answers uh, to people a little bit faster uh, than waiting on the core team to get to that issue or question. And then as always, we do welcome feedback on all the things we do. So how are all the various calls, this special interest group call, along with our monthly community calls and other special interest groups calls. How are they going? How are the topics? How are the demos? Uh, what other documentation can we do to help? Uh, where can where else can we help uh, in addition uh, to documentation and the calls? And of course, positive feedback is okay too. Sometimes it's nice to hear that the things we're doing are uh, enjoyed and we can do perhaps a little bit more of those things that people uh, are enjoying. Moving on to we've got a whole set of different links. Uh, we've got our developer video link there. That will take you to all the developer-focused videos. So those are sort of topical training videos around developer topics. We have our SharePoint community videos. Those are, uh, in addition to the developer-focused videos, those are a lot of the recordings of our community calls. Uh, and other events, so are generally shared there in the community videos. Open source, we've got a whole bunch of repositories uh, that we definitely encourage you to join in, and uh, all of these uh, are uh, welcoming to various forms of contribution, various forms of feedback, uh, but encourage you to get involved in any or all of these that you might be interested. So SharePoint, PNP, Office Dev, and Microsoft Graph, um, great stuff uh, in all of those, so great places to get involved, great places to contribute as well. All of those have opportunities to contribute, so encourage you if you're interested in SharePoint, interested in PMP, contribute there, interested in Microsoft Graph, they're doing a lot of great stuff over there, and interested uh, in having contributors, so certainly uh, welcome you over there as well. Definitely check that out. Uh, we've got a bunch of different sample galleries. SPFX web parts, extensions, list formatting, and teams, samples. Many, many, many of the demos you see on these calls can be found in those sample galleries. So I encourage you to check those out. Those are great places to uh, see, uh, you know, not just the demos, but uh, I use them often as references for, you know, you can't remember everything in the world. So great places to check out how certain things are done. I'm often checking out the list formatting uh, one to remember how on earth to add icons to things because uh, I can't remember all these things uh, like Chris does. And uh, finally, 
if you're a uh, man, that's a lot of links. There's only one link you really need to remember, aka.ms m365 pnp. That will take you to a landing page for the entire program all up, where you can uh, find links to all of the other things I have mentioned on that homepage. We also have SharePoint Framework Documentation, aka ms slash spfx, will take you to the SharePoint framework specific developer documentation. So definitely check that out. And two Twitter uh, users or accounts down there to follow Microsoft 365 Dev and M365 PNP are great places as well for all the latest news. And so I think David Warner is going to take over for this slide. Sure. Thanks, Patrick. So if you're looking to get involved in the community and start contributing, uh, the Sharing is Caring initiative is the initiative for you. Uh, these are hands-on live sessions with safe space repositories where we uh, walk you through step-by-step uh, -step how you can learn how to contribute to the community. We've got a number of sessions that are available, starting with first-time contributors that are coming up on the 14th and the 16th. Community docs are great for the non-devs that are looking to contribute that don't feel like maybe there's been a place so far. Community docs is absolutely fantastic. And we have some Asia-Pacific friendly times available as well. On the flip side of that coin, we also know that some uh, are new in the community and are looking to contribute, but also looking to consume. And they may be a little confused on where to start. So we have a new session on how to start consuming and using the SPFX samples using Node Version Manager. That first session is tomorrow. Still time to register if you'd like, but we've got two additional sessions available for you as well. Uh, we just had our first Asia Pacific first time contributor session on uh, Wednesday, uh, and we broke the record for attendees for the entire month of August. So it's fantastic to see so much support for the community all across the globe. Please don't hesitate to sign up. We'd love to see you there and help you learn how to get more involved in the community. Thanks, Patrick. Back to you. Thanks, David. Yeah, fantastic program. If you're looking to get involved, looking to contribute, and you're a little bit unsure on how to get started or want a little bit of help with that first pull request, really encourage you to check this out. It's it's a great initiative and a great opportunity for some, some open learning, free sessions, really great stuff, really great work from everybody putting on those sessions. Encourage you to check those out. I uh, do want to mention as well the recordings for, was it last week or two weeks ago? Time is so blurry right now. Uh, the Microsoft 365 PNP virtual conference recordings are all available on YouTube. So AKMS PNP virtual conference will now take you to the YouTube listing or the listing of videos available on YouTube, I should say. And you can check those out, encourage you to see all of those sessions. Uh, I've heard, I have not personally had a chance to watch them all, but I've heard great things about all the sessions and all of them were quite highly rated. Uh, so encourage uh, all of you to check those out. Another great resource. Uh, for the uh, just general learning about everything PNP, everything uh, Microsoft 365. And so that was a great session. Again, congrats to Paolo and everybody else that helped put that on, all the presenters, really great work, fantastic stuff from the community there. And now I'll pass it over to Vesa for SharePoint framework updates. Yeah, so nothing too traumatic on my side. So I only have a one slide uh, just to recap on, on where we are investing. Right now, we're working on a 1.12 release, and we talked about the Fluid Framework. We talked about the Node.js uh, 2.12 support, and all of that is in the pipeline for SharePoint Framework. But more specifically, we're working uh, also on performance improvements, so both for runtime and build time. So making things that stuff is uh, working much more efficiently, integrated development tools, and that's being uh, worked on specific guidelines and samples on a performance performance. There's work being done on the permissions and auth, so we are moving to the MSAL uh, implementation uh, because when we implement that first time, the craft uh, access token handling in the SPFX and the Azure AD access token handling, uh, MSAL was not actually GA, so we were unable to use it at the time, so it's still implemented using ADAL. Um, it's technically completely seamless for the developers, and that's, that's the whole objective of the abstraction layers here. Um, and then the really main focus area for us, no doubt, is the Teams improvements. So SP SharePoint Framework is intended to be the easiest way to do any extensibility in the, in the Microsoft Teams uh, if you are a developer. Obviously, if you're looking into doing low-code, uh, no-code solutions, then the Power Automate and Power Platform is definitely the, probably the easiest way to do that. But then looking into the automatic hosting optimization on operations, then the SharePoint Framework is, is the easiest way to do that, those developments. That didn't make any sense, by the way, but anyway, 
So it seems to say a really, really big focus area in the future. And then Opel as well looking into doing faster uh, release cycles and updated uh, tooling like the Node, uh, Node.js 12 support for SPFX. But that's a quick recap from my side from the engineering. So Troy, back to you, Patrick. Awesome. Thanks, Vesa. Excited to see all those updates coming out, especially MSAL support. That's going to be a big one for a lot of folks. And I believe Julie is on the call to cover this slide. I am. Well, that's Take not it away. the slide. There we go. <laughs> all right. Thanks. Um, so we did uh, get back on our monthly cadence, cadence Excuse me. on September 4th. We dropped a 2.0.9 release, and we definitely did some, some work there. So uh, Patrick added get stream file support for Node.js uh, and updated the taxonomy implementation. So there was uh, some underlining API changes uh, that needed to be addressed. So we had to rework what we had originally released with the taxonomy implementation. And so uh, the docs and that, that code base is updated for use. Uh, we also added a couple extra pieces. So delete with permissions for folder, file, and item uh, was added, as well as a check for file existence so that you can do some better error handling. Um, we added add subfolder uh, using path. And some other bug fixes, a big documentation update, uh, just fixing spelling mistakes and for clarity, uh, that went out. Uh, and so thank you again to all our contributors uh, that put in time and effort. That was a, it was a pretty big release. Um, if you could, please follow us on Twitter, uh, M365PMPJS. We are starting to use that as our primary communication account for all of the updates and things going on with PMPJS. So it would be really great if you could uh, follow that Twitter account and, and socialize that we're using that Twitter account. And so I think that's about it. Uh, Patrick, back to you. Awesome, thank you for that update. Julie, I do wanna add, uh, we did introduce a bug in the, the common JS version of the libraries. I've been working on that. Uh, I'm probably gonna get a uh, 2.0.10 release out later today to address that. So apologies for the people affected by that, uh, but got that, I think, pretty much resolved and we'll have a release out a little bit later today. And all that's gonna do is then the October release will be 2.0.11, so everything will just push out and the rest of the dates uh, will stay the same. So CLI updates. Anybody on the call for CLI updates? Yep, it's Gary. Hi. Um, okay, yeah, so uh, we've actually got a big update this week. So uh, in the last call we talked about um, the beta release of, of uh, V3 and the big rename from Office 365 CLI to CLI for Microsoft 365 happening. Uh, well, at the weekend, we actually released V3. So this is the latest version now. Uh, we have deprecated a version uh, two. So if you're currently using um, Office 365 CLI V2, uh, it will still work. It's still in NPM. Um, it's been deprecated, so it won't um, be updated with any new features or any bug fixes. So it encouraged you to move to um, uh, CLI for Microsoft 365. Uh, so you can get that with the new package name of at PMP uh, forward slash CLI hyphen Microsoft 365. Uh, so note that there is the new executable there. Um, that is the only executable now because we've dropped the 0365 um, uh, executable that we that we had in the previous version. We do have some documentation to help you make the transition uh, from version two to version three. So we have introduced some breaking changes, uh, not tons, but some you know changes that you need to be uh, be made aware of. So if you check out the uh, the documentation, um, it, it's on there for you to uh, to, to make those changes. Um, but we've also introduced um, some new commands as well. At the same time, um, we've introduced some new Microsoft to-do commands um, as well um, as part of the, the V3 release. So if you're looking to work with your to-do lists from the command line, then you can do it with the, uh, the CLI. Um, again, thank you to all the contributors that have got us to version three um, and uh, helping us uh, you know, add new commands. We've still got plenty of issues available, uh, ready to be picked up. So if you're looking to contribute, we'd absolutely love you to spend your time uh, helping us add more features. Back to you, Patrick. Awesome. Thank you for that update. Really excited about all the stuff happening with the CLI. Uh, really great developments. 
So uh, just great work by everybody involved in that project. So thanks to everybody there and great work. Uh, reusable SPF controls. Anybody on the call for those? Going once. Uh, reusable controls are a set of React controls. There's a set of React controls and a set of property controls. The React controls designed, of course, to be used in the body of your web parts. Property controls for the edit pane of your web parts. Next up, uh, switching to V2 with Fluent support uh, V6. That is in progress. Uh, I don't have a current status on that, but that is in the works. For more information, SharePoint GitHub.io SP. Dev FX property controls, SP Dev FX controls React. We'll get you more information. Twitter, follow M365 PNP controls. Encourage you to check those out. Great way to jumpstart your projects, jumpstart your development experience, and get you some great out of the box functionality. And finally, uh, or not finally, the PNP SPFX generator is a community supported generator. It uh, helps you add a lot of additional features to your projects at uh, setup time without uh, affecting the eventual project. So the eventual project will, of course, rely on the same underlying uh, references and dependencies as a quote-unquote uh, out-of-the-box SharePoint framework project, uh, but has the, the ability to inject a bunch of additional functionality, uh, such as CLI, uh, update the TypeScript compiler, PNP JS, PNP controls, uh, different frameworks that uh, handlebars, uh, view, for example, that aren't uh, included in the the standard uh, Yeoman generator. So I encourage everybody to check that out as well. I feel like I've said the word encourage on this call a lot. Uh, but check out the documentation, AKMS PNP generator. Chat on Gitter there, gitter.im generator-spfx slash generator. Because anything dealing with Yeoman, you need the word generator twice. So another great resource, excited to see that continue to grow and evolve and get enhancements. So really great stuff there. And then PNP Modern Search. Uh, this is another great PNP capability, building out uh, a modern search experience from a collection of web parts. And uh, I don't know what Spider-Man voice means. I don't know if that's a compliment or an insult. Uh, but building modern search experience with flexible web parts, so this allows you to take a set of pre-made web parts, drop them in, and construct uh, search portal experiences in a modern and flexible way. Uh, V4 is slowly getting started working through that. Uh, so V3, only looking for bug fixes there. Absolutely uh, PRs for bug fixes, but not looking to add new features to V3. If you're interested in contributing on the modern search, V4 is uh, ready and or ready for your contributions, I should say, and uh, would like folks, uh, if you're interested, certainly check that out. And, uh, you know, another great place to contribute to PNP if you're uh, very much interested in search. And so now, uh, PNP samples, that's going to be Hugo. Thank you. So the uh, the SPFX samples repositories are, are repositories that are there to help get you started by providing you really cool samples that are built by an inclusive community. And we welcome everyone and we encourage a positive attitude in helping each other. If you're looking for samples or you'd like to share some cool samples, you know, from simple concepts to very complex solutions, please visit aka.ms slash spfx dash web parts or slash spfx dash extensions. Or we have a new one slash team sample browser, which gives you some uh, team samples uh, using spfx. Uh, so I'd, I'd like to thank all those who contributed over the last two weeks. Those are all the new samples. Uh, or all the up updated samples. We ha we do have two new samples that I'd like to point out. One is the restaurant menu sample by Joao Mendez, uh, which is great if you ever want to show the cafeteria menu or you know any menu information on a site. And it's really designed to fit with the lookbook, which looks awesome. Another one is by Daniel Wetford, uh, which shows you site user and group information. There are a few samples already that, that show how to do this, but Daniel uses a different approach to do this. On the team side, we have a new document review search messaging extension by Marcus Muller, uh, which is great, and I encourage you to go take a look at this. I'd like to point out that we have a new way, if you're ever looking for samples uh, for how to use the cool PMP controls that we just saw earlier, 
Uh, we have a new sample browser in the web parts and the extensions that allows you to find samples by controls. Uh, so I encourage you to do that. I, I'm also saying encourage a lot today. Uh, that's it for me, uh, Patrick. Back to you. There was a couple other uh, team samples. I don't. I apologize. I've been swamped with other conferences and stuff, but I just. Don't, I want to make sure that the other contributors of team samples know that we love them too, and um, we're going to get them their samples featured in the next call. That's a very good point. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Bob. Uh, thanks, Hugo, for those updates. Appreciate it. Uh, really excited to see these samples continue to grow and some of the amazing work going into this uh, sample gallery. And it's certainly a place if you're looking to uh, show off your work uh, and maybe get ready to try and demo your work on one of these calls, uh, dropping a sample in one of these galleries is a great way uh, to get some exposure for your work and your ideas, as well as uh, improve the overall what's available to the community as a resource. So now we are into optional picture time. So if you're into it, and it's totally optional, but if you're into it, turn on your camera and we're going to do a little together mode photo. Sure. Should I share the screen for people to see what we're capturing? So yeah, you should uh, certainly do that. Let me do that. Uh, so let me share my screen. And oh, no, 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 not that. And uh, where, where, where did it go? Here we go. OK, so here and I'm flipping to the together mode still. One, two, three, one, two, three. And now transformation happens magically, and then we're in a classroom. How many people are we getting this time? <laughs> Not more than that. Well, obviously, this we don't want to spend too much time on these things, but I think this is is really cool way of actually seeing the faces behind of the and and AC. Remember the hands. <laughs> no, no, it's all good. <laughs> Excellent. I will take one screenshot out of that. Um, Bob is waving on the top row as well. Uh, Mark, behave. You're in the second last row. And yeah, that, that troll in the middle, that's always doing that. <laughs> and one more. <laughs> I think that's it for now. So thank you, everybody. So let's go to the demo. So excellent. <laughs> All right. So our first demo is, uh, do, do, do. I forget who was first on the slide. Uh, Yannick, you are up first. OK, great. Thank you. So uh, let me share my screen. Um, so my demo is about my web part that I created about uh, building a Microsoft Graph People Search web part. So we'll start first with the why of this web part. Basically, uh, how every web part starts or everything that you build is because you have a need and there's nothing else in the community that solves it. So you start building it yourself. And first of all, um, what I normally use to show user profiles or um, a who is who on an intranet, on the SharePoint intranet, were the PMP modern search um, web parts that showed all of the profiles in a nice way, looking similar to the people web part that's out of the box available in SharePoint. Um, the problem is that with the PMP modern search is based on SharePoint user profiles. And with this, in this specific case, um, the user profiles had incorrect and incomplete data. Basically, when you have a user account in Azure Active Directory and that user logs in into SharePoint, it gets a user profile created. But then afterwards, if you disable that account or you uh, tweak something and you do not remove the account uh, from Azure Active Directory, the user profile still exists. And um, that's a problem in environments where they like to keep their disabled accounts uh, around for a certain amount of time. So as a result, their user profiles in SharePoint still contain those profiles and they get shown on the who is who. And that's probably not what you want to do. Um, you could try and filter it with custom properties, but then again, not all properties from Azure Active Directory are synchronized into Azure Active Directory. So I went looking out for a way to show the users from Microsoft Graph. Graph provides the ability to filter and uh, limit the search query just to those user profiles that you want to show. 
Now, my requirements for this web part were that it has to show the person card or the people card from Office UI Fabric React, now Fluent UI library. Um, it has to render the whole list of users on pay, uh, page load. It has to be configurable in the search query, so I can say, um, give me only the enabled accounts or only those from a specific department. I wanted to allow additional free text search, so you could provide a set of 100 user profiles and let people search again in there to limit the result set. Preferably, it showed the live person card on hover, so I introduced that as well. Um, and it sh should be based on Microsoft Graph, like I said, because that one um, allows me to achieve everything that I want. Now, looking at the web part itself, this is how it ended up. Um, so on the page, it shows you a certain amount of uh, user profiles that are uh, fetched through a query. And uh, it also shows you the results or the number of results. And I recently added pagination support as well. So um, on first load, it shows you the first set of user profiles from the query that you configured. And then you, uh, it's possible to page through all of the uh, pages that are returned from Microsoft Graph. So if you go to the next page, you will see a small loader like this. But if you then return back to a previous screen, it goes very fast because it keeps the previous result sets in memory. Only when you move to an additional uh, page, it will refetch or do a, a query again to Microsoft Graph. Now, for those people that are um, paying attention, you'll see that there is a small bug in here that I uh, saw uh, when preparing this demo. It's as soon as you move to a second page or a third page, this undefined results uh, shows up. Something that I reported to the graph team and we're discussing whether it's my mistake or their mistake. So we'll see um, uh, how that uh, ends up. And then about the live pers uh, person card or persona card, it's basically the feature where you hover over uh, a user account and it pops out the out of the box um, experience or profile card. You can also click on it and then it will open up the bigger, um, like the bigger persona card. Just a, a reminder here that this is a, a component that's made available or well, that's in SharePoint Online and we're not supposed to use it in our custom development. So um, just so you know, I included it because it was a client uh, request. But if you're not comfortable with using this in your own uh, solutions or, or uh, when you use this web part, I've also got a toggle to, um, to turn it off. Now, if you look at the features when we go edit this web part, you see that I put everything into four categories. First of all, there is this um, query settings that allow you to provide the select parameter, the filter parameter, and the order by parameter values like you would do on, on any graph query. So if you see that we limit, for example, the select parameter value, you will see that this gets updated and some of the, well, if my internet wants. So some of the uh, properties I did not fetch at the moment, so that uh, it doesn't get rendered uh, now. So if we update the select query to all of the necessary properties, you will see that they get filled in again. Now we can also filter on rather simple um, filters like this one, and it just filters on job title. Um, this time it's IT and now it's on a uh, teacher and then it returns 10 values. You can also do more complex uh, queries as long as they're supported um, by Microsoft Graph. So you could do department equals HR or department equals finance for any account that's um, enabled. It doesn't return any results now, but uh, you get the, the point here. And then there's also the order by parameter value. Now, this one uses the user endpoint of Microsoft Graph, and it only supports uh, sorting or order by on display name or user profile name. Just so you know, even though you can fill in whatever you want, if you put in another property, it just returns uh, ordering is not allowed on this property. And you can limit the number of items per page as well. Now, looking at the search parameter option, this one is recently introduced at Microsoft Graph at the beta endpoint, and it allows you to do a full text search on the display name. Um, 
there are four options. There is none. And that's the ability to do a static filtering where you say, let's get all Alex's um, in here. Then it's just filtered like that. Um, you could question why you would do that. You probably will want to put that in the uh, filter parameter in, inside the query uh, part. But you can also have a built-in search box. So if you have the search box, you can do the filtering in here as well. Um, not sure. Let's see if there is a Shelly. No. So, um, so this is the, uh, the result in here. So you can get a, a search box like Adele. And then you filter here as well. You can clear the search query and it returns again. And then the last one that's available is dynamic data. So you can connect any other source. This time I only have the page environment on my page to provide dynamic inputs into this uh, web art. In terms of styling, there's the ability to turn on or off the pagination. So let's say you only want to show the first nine results, uh, turn off pagination, and you cannot uh, go to the next page. Um, the ability to show or hide the results count, as long as this bug is here, you probably want to turn it off. Um, enable the show live persona card, yes or no. And then there's a, the ability to debug the uh, results that you get from Microsoft Graph. So if you switch to the debug mode, you can see everything that's returned um, and uh, work with this. Now, the last one is the templating options. It's, it allows you to tweak the size of uh, the persona card and also manage the persona fields. So this persona card has a, a field for user principal name and four lines of text that you can fill in and you just enter the property name that returns from Microsoft Graph and it will be uh, rendered in these four lines on the page. In terms of improvements, the one thing that it doesn't do yet because I haven't had time is fetching the user profile pictures. So it's on my to-do list for uh, somewhere in the future. Now, switching over to how I did this um, or how I built this, uh, I'm not going to show the code in Visual Studio Code. Um, I have a tendency to click around too much and make it uh, uh, very difficult to follow along. So I just highlighted some of the code snippets that are very interesting or, or I believe interesting. Is The first one is that I put everything from search in a search service. So all my services um, are separate. And one of the actions in my search service is to execute the actual search. And this is where um, I return a page collection of all Microsoft Graph users. So first of all, I get a client from the uh, Microsoft Graph client factory. This is built in into the context of your web art. And there you can uh, get the client factory and get the client. And then you can build your own query. So the first action is to tell uh, the graph client which endpoint you want to use. So in this, uh, I want to use slash users because all of my users are located in there and which version of the uh, graph you want to use. And I'm doing beta endpoint um, because this uh, paging and search uh, parameter is only available in the beta endpoint at the moment. Then um, I say that it has to return the count and how much items it has to return at the first uh, request. And then this is one thing that I uh, struggled with because the documentation isn't so clear um, for this. But basically, if you want to use search or do some advanced order by mechanisms or to account, you have to provide an additional header of consistency level eventual. It's somewhere in the back end, um, a way that they fetch or prefetch their data. And it might be that if you use this and search that it doesn't always um, include or return all of the results that are available um, in your user profile or your user's endpoint normally. And then I just apply additional queries. If there is a select parameter, I provide it. If there is a filter option provided in the web part properties, I add it to the result query and the same goes for the order by parameter. The special one is the search parameter because of the fact that what's built in in types and um, in functionality in the SharePoint framework isn't the beta um, uh, code of uh, Microsoft Graph. So you have to provide the query itself and say which parameter that you want to uh, provide a value for. And in this case, I provide my search parameter for display name. 
and then I execute the request. The second one is for the fetch paging, because I want to fetch the next page, um, and the next page is returned in your first result as a complete URL. So it's a, a complete URL, the same one that I used before with a count and a top 10 um, and a skip token to skip the first set of results and get the next one. And there, the thing is that you um, can inject this whole URL in the API method. So you do graphclient.api, you put in the whole URL, and you still have to provide the dot .header consistency eventual because of the fact that you still want to return the count and the search and everything that you provided in here as well. And this is where we have a discussion with the graph team, because if you do this on the paging, it doesn't, even though it contains count is true and it works on the first request, it doesn't work on the page request. It doesn't return the count value at the moment. And then there is the, um, the container itself that renders a page. The difficulty there was to keep all of the results in memory. So first of all, I'm keeping a state of all my results, which is a, an array of all the pages uh, collection with the user values in there, whether or not we're loading uh, stuff, error messages, if it has an error and the current page that's being loaded. The page collection is a generic interface, so we can provide any uh, graph uh, uh, object. And it provides a value with an array of users in this case, the next link, the previous link, uh, count, and some uh, dynamic properties, if you'd like. Now, that's important to understand because of this code, which is quite complex. Um, if we fetch the people results, we do it for a specific page, and we check if it's a full reset or not. We need to do a reset when we change the uh, web org properties. So first of all, first section, quite simple. If page is one and it's a reset, reload uh, the information. Also do execute this part when there are no results in the state, when the state first results are empty or when there's nothing in the value, just fetch it again. We put it on loading and then we uh, fetch the first request. Every result that re uh, that's returned is an, um, a page collection of Microsoft Graph and we put it in the results property of the state, and we put the page at one. Now, if we move to the second page, we check here if we have fetched um, already that page or not. So we check results length is one, the page we're requesting is two minus one, so it's one equals one. So we check, does there is there a next page? If there is a next page, we load again, and we provide the we fetch the next link from the last uh, result from the state. We execute the search results for the fetch page. We get data and we merge the existing data with the new one that's returned. Now, if we already had uh, page two uh, requested, it would mean that our length would be two, our page would be two minus one. It's not equal, so we skip this one. We are not fetching it again, and we just update the page to being two. That's interesting because when we do the render, that's one in here, we can just use the page in the state to fetch the correct page collection from the state, put it in an items property and use that one to render all of the results. This allows me to keep everything in memory, go forward and backwards between all of the uh, results because the Microsoft Graph does not return this previous link. It only has next links. As soon as you're in page two, you cannot go back by requesting it from Graph again. You have to keep it in memory. And that brings me to the end. I just want to show the resources. So I blogged about this on my blog. Um, the code is on the GitHub. My GitHub is the most recently um, up to date because I've been tweaking it this week. Uh, the ver there's an older, slightly older version in the samples uh, uh, GitHub repository. Uh, I'm sure that Hugo will uh, keep it up to date somewhere in the future. And then there's this um, Microsoft Graph documentation in the beta endpoints that describes all of this uh, consistency level uh, eventual stuff. Okay, Patrick, over back to you. All right, thank you very much. Great, Yannick. Fantastic demo, excited to see that. Really good stuff. So I think uh, Abhishek, if you're ready to go, why don't you go ahead and take over? 
Okay, so this is about monetizing your add-ins with uh, the App Source or the Azure Marketplace. And um, so before I start about the demo and everything, I just wanted everyone to know what's changing. So uh, basically in earlier around January, the seller dashboard has was integrated with Partner Center. So if you wanted to upload your SharePoint framework solutions uh, or Teams add-ins, so you need to go to the Partner Center and from the Partner Center, you would be able to upload it. So because of which uh, the earlier licensing model uh, by which we used to uh, do the licensing for the provider hosted add-in and for the office add-in was retired. So because of which what happened result was that all the paid add-ins were actually converted into the free add-ins. So now you will be only able to upload the free add-ins, but then you would also have an option that it includes the payment options in the add-in itself. So now, one of the biggest uh, question with my uh, partners is that how do I implement the licensing in my add-in so customer can actually purchase it, correct? So here the answer is either you can use your own licensing tool or third-party application, but I would recommend you to use AppSource where you would be able to create a SaaS offering and then link it with your uh, SharePoint framework solutions or other solutions also. So let's quickly look at the architecture around how the architecture would actually be. So anything you, that you see in blue is owned by Microsoft, correct? So now earlier uh, we just had Office 365 and Office add-in or I would say SharePoint uh, solutions that would be uh, that you can download from the app source, correct? And then it finally works and there was an API which was owned by Microsoft. But now what would happen is because we have removed that cap uh, capability of having the licensing framework, you would need to also create a something called a SaaS offering. Okay, uh, this might be confusing for people who might not have used Microsoft Commercial Marketplace, but SaaS offering is kind of a web application that gets hosted in the App Source or Azure Marketplace. So once you have the SaaS offering, you might you would also need something called uh, the SaaS application, or you could also call it something like an admin portal. I'll just do uh, that demo uh, quickly um, after talking about this and. Um, and now because we have the SharePoint solution, so this was only required for the SaaS offering. But why do I have included the API? If someone would ask because SharePoint solutions or SPFX uh, SharePoint framework solutions are client based solutions. So it would be much more easier if you have an API that can talk to Microsoft SaaS fulfillment API. OK, and then get you the information whether the current user is licensed or not. And then this API can also talk with the ISV database saying that, OK, uh, if it was a site based license or a seat based license, if it is a seat based license, you need to also add the users. So all of this code has been developed by Microsoft and the community already. Uh, this is something that I've not built, but uh, this is something that I uh, talk uh, to my uh, partners uh, on the real time basis, and I thought it would be interesting to talk about this. OK, so let's go to a quick demo over here. So I have this particular solution. I have this simple SaaS framework uh, solution over here, which will just load in a minute. Okay, so it um, so it will just display your name and then say that whether you have the license or not. Okay, so now because there is no test mockup or app source, I am using the mockup API. Uh, of the fulfillment, fulfillment and the mock app source also. So let's suppose I went into app source. I already have my SharePoint solution loaded, but it says you don't have a license, so you cannot perform any, any operations because you need the in-house purchase. So I click on, I have the add-in, I click on purchase, the SaaS offering that I have, I click on purchase. Okay, so it would say that, okay, this contest application that you have is a seed based or a site base. Let's go with a site base. Site base means it can have unlimited users. Uh, anyone can access it. So I'll just click on purchase. Once I click on purchase, it would actually get me to my this web application. Okay, so I'll just show you that. 
So it would, from the SaaS offering when I have purchased it, it will actually let, take me to the uh, SaaS application itself. Now, one of the interesting thing to know about over here is that this is called the landing page, okay? And you can just click on buy. Okay, so this is actually called a landing page. Uh, you would see that the app source or marketplace will actually throw you a kind of a token over here that has to be used and that's why it's called a landing page. Once you go into the landing page and say, uh, get your information just like I've, we have just included location, you can say once it's provisioned, you would get back to this is the dashboard page which is called in the Microsoft commercial marketplace stuff. But now if I go back, what you would see is you do have a paid license. Okay, and if I, we have also added some console values, so you would see that, okay, it would give you the information that tenant has purchased a site license, uh, auto license assignment is disabled. These are all the licensing thing that uh, ISV can actually implement. Okay, so this is one of the uh, site-based license, but if I go back, if I click on cancel, and I go to my app source to change my plan and I say I want a seed based plan and I say number of. So it would just update it and if I go back over here. It would say yet that you don't have a license because I've not added the user, but over here you would see that the tenant has purchased the license user current user does has does not have a license, but you have a five license available. So that is a small demo on how you can actually build uh, on the SharePoint framework code of site. If I go uh, as it's simple, a very simple thing. We have created up a AD uh, client. Uh, so sorry. Yeah, so there is a SaaS web API client that we have created that will just what if you can see over here. Uh, give me a second. It would just go to the SAS client and do a post of the values that it has sent like properties. Uh, if you see over here is the value of the SAS web API URL and it would check with the client whether it has the information or not, whether current user by sending up the configuration value, it would say that whether the current op, uh, current user has license or not, or whether the tenant has purchased the license or not. On the web API end, because this is a huge code, you would see the first thing that I showed you was the landing page. Okay, so the landing page is from where the app source actually uh, sends you to a particular application that with a particular token. So you take up the token and then you send it to the fulfillment API, and the fulfillment API will do the job for you. And then a simple home controller or the dashboard controller where you manage up your license. So I would actually recommend you to go to uh, this particular sample, uh, which is Office Dev uh, Office Add-in SaaS monetization, and we have all the deployment steps, all the monetization code sample, which is already available. Uh, try it. We have it uh, for SharePoint hosted, provider hosted, uh, SPFX solutions, also for Outlook, Word, and Excel. Uh, there are a few more coming up, so you can uh, try out the code and uh, see how it all works. So uh, that is a small thing and then let's go by the click uh, links. So you need to understand about the marketplace. Uh, so you need to understand about the SaaS offerings that are there and how do you create one and then how do you use a partner center to submit an application to app source. So these I would believe these are a few of the readings that you might uh, that you might want to learn about. So that was it from my end. All right, very All right. cool. And it's a, it's a great topic, especially with uh, apps in the store now. Uh, licensing is something I think uh, more and more developers are going to be considering uh, in the solutions they develop. So Kislay, if you are ready to go, um, I yeah. think, uh, great, take it away. Yeah, hello, everyone. Uh, so the today, my demo is regarding the SharePoint Starter Kit uh, version 2. Uh, first, a bit about me. Uh, my name is Kisla Sina and work in CGI in Aurobro, Sweden. And uh, 
you can connect with me on uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, and on my blog posts as well. First of all, what is Chapman Starter Kit version 2? And you might have already seen it. Uh, and when I saw it, I was quite impressed with this. Uh, it's a comprehensive solution, showcasing, you know, packaging, solution deployment, provisioning, and, you know, different types of SPFX web parts, uses of Graph API, and it's a lot to learn actually in this. And that's why I really liked it. Um, why? I mean, this has been created by best people, I think, I believe in. And I've seen the list of the contributors. They're the best people in the field. And you can learn a lot uh, how to package a solution, the provisioning mechanism. You know, you can build your own modern portals based on this. And um, in this version, some of the web parts actually work in uh, SharePoint 2019 as well. So, yeah. And so how to do it? Uh, well, you need some prerequisites. You need to be a tenant admin. Um, and you need to set your tenant as a target release. Uh, app catalogs should exist and you should have PNP PowerShell installed. Uh, you must download the source code or uh, get it from the GitHub through sync and, and then just three commands. You connect to PNP online, go to the provisioning folder of the source code and run apply PNP template and this will do everything. If you face any issues, you can log issues or read the issues in if there. I actually faced the issue in which uh, I was not able to install it properly, and then I had to switch to a particular version of uh, PowerShell, and the latest one was not working, and I had to also uh, pitch in a couple of more commands to make it work. Uh, that information, you can find uh, it on uh, my blog, actually. Um, and uh, then there are three, you get, what you get is basically three site collections, a hub site and a couple of team sites. There are a bunch of custom web parts and extensions, which you can also look and learn. Um, so I will now show you, if you run the apply PNP template command, what happens? So it's a video, but uh, yeah, I can just show you quickly so we don't. Uh, so this is how you start it, and then it will try to you know, upload the, all the packages. In this case, it is showing it's skipping because I had already had the packages when I recorded this video. but um, after that, it will actually uh, start the sequence that you apply the templates, you know, uh, list instances, it will create files. It will upload all the files which are needed, like images and everything. And also, uh, it will start creating all the client side pages, you know, uh, and it will also apply, um, keep on applying the client side pages. Uh, and then it will create the list instances which are needed. To, to run for footer and everything. And at the end, you get a message like this, that three sites are created. So let's go to the sites to have a look in detail. Um, so this is the hub site which is created, and you can look at that uh, it has all the theming and everything done. Also, all the navigations are created here. Uh, I can start from the top. You can see that there is a message saying, don't miss the demo. And this is an alert mechanism which has been created also in this and basically you have to add something in the alert list and there's an extension which you know pushes this on the top actually and then uh, uh, you can see there are different web parts where you can see your latest emails your upcoming meetings uh, whether time at our offices and these are configurable like in the my tasks you can have the source from the planner or from the to-do uh, you can set how long the meeting should have, like how many days in future the meeting should be displayed here. Um, so all those are actually in build, and it's a very good thing to showcase to your customer. Or also learn from this, you know, if you're building uh, custom web parts, how to build them, how to, what should we thought, think about, how, what settings you, need, you should have in your uh, web parts. That is something you should, and of course there are footer here also you can see. Uh, which is also coming from the uh, footer links actually here, which can be editable. And then um, there is a personal page, which can, you can also visit. Uh, this is the organization page. And if you go to the personal page, uh, you will see some similar web parts uh, and you will see the contact list, your recent contacts, followed sites, recent documents and uh, people directory also. So if you click on uh, on, on the alphabet, you will get it and these inside. So all these wonderful custom web parts are here and which you can actually learn from a lot also. 
And as I said, it also create two team sites, which are pretty basic in nature, human, human sources and marketing also similar to that. Uh, but it's a, it's you, what you need to understand is that it's a sample site, which can connect, you know, the hub, hub sites into different team sites also. I also created a demo page to showcase a couple of other, uh, like the recent contact. This is also web part and also site information, which displays the site name, the department and the uh, email address of the contact of this site, you know. So that is the teams, team sites which are there in this one. So now we'll go back to the slides again. Okay. Uh, yeah, so demo was done and uh, provisioning. Um, if you like, if you'd like to make uh, this your own, like uh, you want to make a customization of provisioning, uh, you can do it. And there was a very good demo done by Eric Overfield in the PNP virtual conference, and you should have a look at that if you want to learn that. It's very detailed, but what I'm going to show is a bit uh, short version of that today. Um, you can see that there are two commands which you need to really know is that read PNP template, which will read an XML file, uh, which will generate the PNP, uh, you know, uh, through say PNP template, and that can be pushed uh, to, to, to the tenant, you know. So let's have a look on the source code. So this is the starter kit XML, and this is under the source uh, and you can hear, you can see all the source code of all the web parts is also available for you to, to have a look, uh, which you can go through. And the starter kit XML file is the one which, you know, pulls all the information which we need to have for provisioning. Um, and it will create a PNP file, as I mentioned, it will include all the files, all the images and everything. So I have, you know, drilled down this a bit. So you can see that uh, we have, uh, and some preferences done here first, then web API permissions, and then you they push all the catalog, uh, all the web parts in the catalog, you know, so that is done. Uh, and then of course it needs some web, web, web API permissions also. Um, and then it will also push the site scripts, uh, site designs, you know, and also the sequence in which the site has to be created. So this is also uh, mentioned here with all the template details you can see. So what I want to show here is that you can learn a lot from this, how to provision all kind of different things, you know. Uh, you can also see that uh, we have uh, here uh, term stores, uh, terms how to push uh, terms to term store if you want to pro use that in your provisioning. So you can actually learn from here. And um, then we have the templates, you know, which we can also uh, see how it does. Uh, the navigation, uh, you, you saw that we have global navigation, structural navigation, and how those are pushed. Side field content types, and the most in, uh, client side pages. And, you know, we often have to create a lot of client side pages and put web parts to it. And if you want to learn how to provision them, you can look at, have, have a look here. It has created quite complex pages also, you know, and with all the details of how to put a canvas control and how to put the news, what's the JSON control data you need to use. So all this is here. And so that is how you can actually learn from this and make your own. Uh, basically, you can edit this and remove all the other things which you don't need and just create one site and some client side pages to learn out of it. So that is how you can do also. So that's one other benefit of having a look into this. And I really recommend if you have not looked into this, you should actually. Um, SharePoint 2019, as I mentioned, some things work in 2019 also. And the apply PNP template command is not available as of now, uh, but you can actually deploy individual apps in 2019 farm. And these are the apps which uh, will work. Not all the apps work, only some of them. And to deploy, you can just copy the package file from the uh, solution folder, uh, which I have uh, given here, and that is how you do. So I also have a short, small single farm 2019 Actually, uh, you can see uh, this is a farm uh, put in Azure virtual machine, actually, which is running. So these are the app, couple of apps I have installed. And uh, you can see that uh, I have a site also here in which I have actually added this links web part that is coming from the starter kit, 
it's also you know can be used as i said so this is a 2019 actually site and not shepherd online so that is what i wanted to show you that it can work in 2019 also and there's a lot to learn uh, if you want to build spfx the parts for 2019 you know which you generally don't find on the, on the internet pretty easily um so yeah uh, references uh, that's the github link uh, as i said you can look you should look into the eric's um, uh, pnp virtual conference video where he, he has explained how to make your uh, pnp customizations for provisioning which is a re really great thing to learn actually out of this and i have written a blog about this also which you can actually have a look uh, also so i really want to thank all the contributors who did this actually because it's a great learning for anybody to have it and uh, thanks for joining me in today's presentation and uh, i was a bit nervous and excited also because this was the first time but uh, i really thankful to the host to give me opportunity to do this thank you Awesome, thank you, great job. Uh, you didn't sound nervous at all, that was really wonderful. I uh, appreciate you taking the time to present. So we're gonna jump back over to the slides and close things out. So thank you, Yannick, thank you, Kisle, and thank you, Abhishek, uh, for three great demos again. Uh, no time today for Q&A, so we'll move on to just say thank you to everybody for joining the call today. Very much appreciate it. Thank you again to our presenters. Thank you again to everybody active in the community. Recording will be available in about 24 hours, give or take. Follow us on Twitter. Next SPFX call is in two weeks on September 24th, 7 a.m. Pacific time. And the next general dev special interest group call is next Thursday, same time, September 17th. Uh, join us there as well. And our October monthly community call will be October 13th. Teeth. So thank you all very much. Uh, encourage you to check. See, I slipped another encourage in there. Uh, encourage you all to check everything out. Lots of other great community calls going on uh, out there from a lot of other groups, programs, uh, communities. Encourage you to check out, of course, as many of those as you can. Thank you, everybody. Have a great rest of your week, and we will talk soon. Encourage.